Welcome back to the season final of the cast off. We're going to choose one lucky winner to join us in Los Angeles for the 2015 Call of Duty Championship presented by Xbox. So far, we've got a chance to sit down with Dirk. Yep. Talk to him about his event experience. But now we're going into the videos from Gizmo. Of course, Gizmo, um, he was a guy who when we watched the initial submissions, I thought I had some of the best camera presence out of anyone right. who submitted yeah. a video. Right away, he grabbed my attention. He was very clear. Um, favorite Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare so far. So uh, one thing that we were kind of interested in, he's, he mentions how many games in, in esports he's a fan of, and that kind of made us question, well, how much time do you have dedicated to fall Call of Duty. What did you guys think of his initial phases before we got to see him on land this past I weekend? I mean, you go back to the on-camera stuff. I mean, his job on a meteorologist. He nailed it. Anything yeah. on camera you look at and you think, yeah, this guy is sharp. He knows what he's talking about. He has a clear voice, everything like that. Uh, one of my initial concerns, though, was I know he doesn't really play the game that much, as much as others do, at least. That was something that he told me himself. But he really impressed me. He did. Yeah, he knew he had his, knowledge. Yeah, he knew his stuff. I mean, when I casted with him and just, you know, hanging out with him around the venue, mm -hmm. just a ton of questions about, you know, COD history, you know, good conversation about, just genuinely loves esports in general. So I uh, definitely brought that knowledge and, you know, tons of, uh, you know, familiarity with the players and the teams. One of my favorite things was before the event, uh, he he called me. He's like, "Pucket, my flight got canceled." I was like, "I know, I know, I know. everybody's <laughs> flight got canceled." I'm still in bed. It's 8:30. I know you're getting canceled. But I was like, "Didn't you see this one coming?" As a <laughs> <laughs> just right, yeah. He's like, "Actually, I did." And, and my lady friend let me know as well. But just thought I'd share the news. So all of our casters nice. had some interesting flights, but uh, yeah. he at least got a heads up, gave himself that. Um, Gizmo, though. I was really impressed with his hosting skills. He was actually pretty solid on that throughout the weekend, but I want to see what he was talking about during his vlog. Let's take a look. All right, so coming in to you now, just before I'm about to broadcast for my first time, still pretty much the same thing from earlier. Still have the nerves, but a little bit anxious now. We've kind of gotten postponed a little bit, so it makes the nerves a little bit worse, but I think after getting into the game, Jack's been doing an awesome job so far with the other two guys, and uh, he's made them really comfortable, so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with me as well. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I phase red, so I know there will be a bunch of people watching, and if they can turn up, they should uh, be able to handle this Gravity Squad pretty quickly. It looks like finally Optic Nation can get their first cap here. That's Karma Slam through. Now the score, 5-1, to one, with just over two and a half minutes left. It's only going to be an uphill battle, but you have to start somewhere, right, Matt? You needed that first one. Karma now getting a big kill on Enable. Now we're going to start to see them push a little bit more. He's starting to turn it up a little bit. He's got a two-streak. TP trying to pull the flag. And Karma can't get the kill there. Slasher with a nice two-piece against Karma and TP. All right, so we just got done with our first match, uh, phase 1-3-0. So I didn't get to do an uplink, which is the only thing uh, that really sucks about it. The other two guys were able to do uplink because theirs both went 3-1. Mine was a 3-0. But uh, I feel like it went pretty well. Jack, Jack made me feel very, very comfortable. That helped again. Um, some small little blips. I, I have to do a better job using uh, the controller and driving. That was probably my biggest problem so far, but I'm glad to get the first one out of the way. The nerves are always worse for that, and then from here on out, it should be smooth sailing. Excited for the rest of this weekend. Right. So that should have happened. What, what went wrong there? You know, it looked like he might have pushed too far to the middle. I didn't exactly see, but you sometimes like them coming around towards back steps and move from checkers when you're in that bar hill. Move from checkers towards this top attic. That'll usually get you set up better for those spawns. But right now, you're starting to see FaZe grow a small lead, 25 points. So not insurmountable by any means, but right now, any little bit helps as we head to the last 20 seconds of this first rotation. Yeah. And then as far as... Uh, disappointment goes. I don't think anybody did poorly today, uh, but if I had to be disappointed, it would probably be Fox. Um, I just, I hold him in a high regard because I know uh, how long he's been doing it and um, how much he's put into it. So for um, a person like me or uh, Chance, and, Chance and I both are very, very new. Um, so when Fox has been around, I hold him a little bit higher. Um, as far as my regard for him. So I think he just was talking over uh, Courage a little bit today and just I overall expected just a little bit more from him. But uh, tomorrow's a new day for all of us. So uh, we'll see what happens day two. But I'm excited to get started and Saturday should be a grind, but uh, I'm ready to enjoy it. As far as um, someone who I wouldn't want to cast with again, uh, and the person that I'd vote off is gonna have to be the same person. Um, and it's not a personal thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Fox for me. Um, I just expected a lot from him coming in, um, just knowledge-wise and um, 
his impact on Twitter, how involved he was with Reddit, and um, we just didn't click really uh, on air. I thought that was my worst cast by far. Um, I felt like he kind of interrupted me. It, it, with him, it was the only person so far all weekend that I felt it. It felt like it, it was he was competing with me during the broadcast, and that's gonna make both of us look bad. Um, everybody else so far has has really kind of tried to work with each other, and I feel like that makes us all look better at the end of the day. I get it's a competition, but um, still, you can't be like trying to out knowledge me and all that kind of stuff in the middle of the broadcast that, that's not going to look good for anybody so uh that would be my vote again nothing personal just what i was seeing this weekend so that was a look at gizmo and, uh, i think Gizmo did pretty well this weekend and we actually have gizmo on skype with us as well uh gizmo gotta ask you my friend how did you find your first ever line event it was stressful man to be <laughs> honest uh again like i told you in the initial phases i've never done this before right when i applied for the first time that's my first time ever doing it so going to the land and then it, it's a really weird thing when first of all seeing you guys because you watch i watch so much and you see i'm spending hours with you every day and you just don't know it as creepy as that sounds <laughs> uh, it's kind like of the it, same though. thing with the post when you see everybody all at once it's kind of a weird thing certainly the nerves were going but uh to be honest i was pretty happy with how it went uh i know there are some roasts in the chat i certainly got some roasts on twitter but uh for being my first time i was happy with it and uh, i think everyone really did a pretty good job all right. Well, I was very surprised, um, pleasantly surprised when I listened in to your first cast. The the one note, same thing that I gave to Jamie, was a lot of right now. And um, that was the same problem Fwiz had. That was the same problem that I've seen multiple casters have. And when you get kind of in that rut. So hard to get out. It's, it's hard to get so, out of it. Especially when your co-caster is saying it as well, because then you don't pick up on it. Um, but other than that, I thought you had some very strong play-by-play, -play, but I, I heard you mention to someone throughout the weekend that you preferred to take the analytical approach to it. What, what was kind of your casting style in your opinion? You know, the first, my initial video was more play-by-play, -play, and then the second one, everyone said, you need to work on this, we're worried about your knowledge, so I went way analytical, and then uh for regionals i tried to kind of just balance it in between i think i probably prefer more of an analytics but uh when i'm going with mr rex there's really not too many things that i can say <laughs> that aren't going to sound better coming from him right so that's what it was actually a pretty Small. good pairing as stressful as it was on main stage to make me kind of force me to do more play by play i didn't have a choice i had to because anything that needs to be said people are going to want to hear it from him because he knows it, he's done it, and he's proven it on the biggest stage last year at Champs. So um, it was certainly a different experience on main stage trying to be more play-by-play, -play, but I think if I had to pick something that I was better at over the weekend, it would probably be analyzing a little bit more. So uh, Gizmo, you mentioned uh, didn't have the best of times casting with Fox. You know uh, What went wrong there? And then uh, out of the other contestants on the cast, who would you enjoy casting with the most? Uh, I'll start with the question about Fox, uh, again, like Dirk said, it wasn't like a personal thing. Uh, it just seemed like for whatever reason with him as opposed to uh, with Courage, Chance, and Dirk, it was more of a competition with Fox. It seemed like that. And I know we're in a competition, obviously, but the viewer doesn't care at the end of the day. The viewer's trying to watch a good product. We're trying to put on a good product. And I felt like we were kind of talking over each other at times. I was trying to get a word in when I was speaking. He was coming on top of me. Um, so I think that was that was pretty much the main problem, uh, similar to what Dirk said. Again, nothing personal, just what I felt as a cast. And then my favorite person, uh, that's tough. I have a lot of, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to say Dirk, just because we're the original duo from the, from the first <laughs> night. And uh, he carried me then. He carried me a lot during, during the weekend. But really, everybody did a good job. Courage, uh, we haven't talked about him enough, but Jack did an unbelievable job making all uh, three of us and four of us look pretty good throughout the entire weekend. Gizmo, I've got to ask you, if you were to mm -hmm. win season one of the cast off, how much would that mean to you? It would mean an awful lot. Uh, this is something that I know I don't have the biggest Twitter following and I don't post a ton on Reddit, but this is something that I do uh, care about really deeply. And it's 
my passion right now. I come home from work and this is what I do is I'm either watching or playing. So it would mean a great deal to me. I know I have room to grow. The chat and Twitter has certainly told me that over the past couple of days. But I think with my experience in broadcasting, it's just going to take a little bit more work with you guys to polish it. And I feel like I could be a pretty proficient caster sooner than later. But it would mean a great deal. And uh, going out to L.A. would, would be really a dream come true. I think you're pretty close, man. I think you're pretty close to being there. Um, Wanted to get your opinion. What do you think was your weakness this past weekend? And what was your greatest strength throughout the event? Weakness is not difficult. Search and destroy. uh, (laughs) You guys make that look easy. When there's slow plays, your ability to fill is really, really key. Uh, The other thing, and I think it comes back to kind of the difference between play-by-play and analytics, I would catch myself trying to explain something and then while I'm explaining it a play is happening and trying that transition to almost cut yourself off to make sure you're doing enough play by play was really difficult and as far as uh, what I was happy with over the weekend I would probably say um, just my consistency and the ability to do it on land I was really nervous coming in to be honest because this is a pretty big stage and not that I didn't know my stuff, but all these other guys, you see Fox or all these fans on Reddit and Twitter, and they're blowing up his Twitter. And then these other guys are doing so well. So I was just happy that I, I really held my own. That's what I said, what I told my parents, I told my girlfriend coming into this weekend is, whatever happens, happens. But as long as I hold my own and I know that I could do this in the future, I'm gonna be happy. And so I'm pretty much at peace. Whatever happens tonight, I'm comfortable with. I know that I feel like I did a good job this weekend and I feel like I have a future in it. Gizmo. How much of a shock was it when we told you that you're going to be casting on Alpha Stage? And how did you kind of react to that internally? It was as big of a shock as when uh, Puckett called and said we we're going to be possibly flying out to Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was really shocked. You know, it's funny you say that because we it all pretty much had talked in the hotel room afterwards. We all got comfortable on Bravo Stream. The first broadcast is really really rough, and then the next the next game you're starting to kind of get a little bit more into it. So then after day one, we're all kind of like, oh okay, we're comfortable. We're in the Bravo. It's a little bit offset. Purple. You don't have the, all the fans in front of you. The pros aren't listening in, and uh, we all felt real comfortable. And then on Saturday, of course, we wake up and you guys are like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're going to be on Alpha. And all of us kind of looked real shocked. I don't know how many of us really showed it, but I can speak for myself when I was saying I was certainly way, way more nervous. Uh, Yeah, that was me again. I've made a few (laughs) executive decisions throughout this season. Uh, First, bringing on some bonus people. Um, Then, of course, you know, bringing you guys out to Columbus. But I was sitting back with Activision and, and Xbox marketing and everyone was so impressed by your guys performance i thought you deserved a spot on alpha for the weekend so wanted to see how you'd perform under the pressure i thought all of you handled it really well so hats off to you gizmo final question favorite part of the weekend i know wednesday we got a or thursday we got a chance to have some beers with the players just hanging out with the staff relaxing what was your favorite part though Yeah, that was cool. That was kind of surreal walking in and again, seeing you guys, seeing all the players. That was strange. But I think just really the opportunity to do it on that stage. I mean, I was trying to explain it to my parents who don't really completely understand competitive Call of Duty yet. And I was saying, we're going to be calling the best players in the game, the top of the top of the top. So I would have never in a million years imagined that this quickly into my career, I'd be calling highlights over denial versus prof. I mean, what an amazing gamer. How about on main stage between Optic Nation and Phase Red with Teep and Aches going at it for the first time on land. So that was probably the highlight uh, cast with Mr. X on, uh, on the alpha stream, just because that was a match that when the bracket came out, I was looking forward to just watching. Then all of a sudden I get thrust into having to do it and broadcast it. So that was probably the highlight. But really, honestly, the entire end. I know I was probably bugging every single one of you. You don't have to say it on air and embarrass me, <laughs> but uh, asking you guys questions, just picking your brain because you guys are the ones that uh, that really see it day in, day out. And I just loved being able to pick your brain. Certainly, Mr. X, I asked a million questions too, but why not take advantage of that resource when you have it? But again, I just, I want to say thank you for the opportunity. It was absolutely amazing. If I get to go to LA, it would be a dream come true. But uh, so far, I'm just really happy with how everything went. All right, it was a pleasure, my friend. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for this portion of the show. We might be bringing you back on a little bit later, so hang out with us for a bit longer. Guys, coming up after the commercial break, though, Fox the Don is coming on. We're going to take a look at his vlogs throughout the weekend. Who did he enjoy casting with the most? And more importantly, I want to know, who does he not want to see <laughs> when this thing? We'll be right back. <laughs> 